Imagine a $1.2 billion train that does not touch the rails. Shanghai's maglev floats at 430 kilometers per hour, making it the fastest commercial train on Earth and a symbol of engineering ambition that no rival has matched. Yet two decades after its launch, this floating rocket remains an outlier. Why did the world's most advanced railway never spark a global revolution? The answer is not what you think, and what happened next will make you question everything about the future of travel. On March 1, 2001, ground broke in Shanghai's Pudong district on a project unlike anything the city or the world had ever seen. This was the start of the Shanghai Maglev, a collaboration between Chinese planners and Germany's Transrapid Consortium led by Siemens and Thyssenkrupp. The German team arrived with a blueprint for magnetic levitation rail, a technology that had dazzled on test tracks but never found a home in Europe. Shanghai's leaders, eager to leapfrog into the future, saw an opportunity to turn their city into a global showcase for next-generation transport. The deal was not just about trains, it was about prestige. With Germany's own maglev ambitions stalled by politics and local resistance, executives from Siemens and ThyssenKrupp pushed hard to land a commercial breakthrough abroad. On China's side, then-Mayor Xu Kuangdi championed the project, determined to brand Pudong as a high-tech gateway to the world. The contract came with strings, strict licensing agreements, proprietary technology, and a promise that the system would be built to impress. In less than three years, engineers and workers erected 30.5 kilometers of elevated guideway, assembled the futuristic train sets, and prepared for a launch designed to capture global attention. On December 31, 2002, dignitaries from both nations gathered for the inaugural run, a ceremonial ride that sent the world's first high-speed maglev train floating above its track. Then on January 1, 2004, full commercial service began cementing Shanghai's place as the only city to turn Maglev's promise into a reality. The ribbon was cut, the cameras flashed, and a new era in rail travel officially began. Every 15 to 20 minutes, a Maglev train glides out of Pudong International Airport, bound for Longyang Road Station at the city's edge. The journey stretches just over 30 kilometers, with the train floating silently above its guideway and accelerating to 300 kilometers per hour on most scheduled runs. For a few minutes, passengers experience the sensation of flight. No track noise, no vibration, only the faint rush of air as the city blurs past. The entire ride lasts eight minutes, a fraction of the time it would take by car during Shanghai's notorious rush hour. But the headline speed of 430 kilometers per hour is now reserved for special demonstration runs. Routine services rarely push past 300 kilometers per hour, a decision shaped by the realities of daily operation. High speeds mean higher energy bills, faster wear on the guideway, and more frequent maintenance shutdowns. Operators have found that balancing efficiency with reliability keeps the trains running on time, even if it means sacrificing some of the spectacle. On the platform, a mix of travelers lines up. Business flyers, tourists eager for a taste of the future, and the occasional commuter willing to pay a premium. Most riders still face another leg of their journey because the Maglev's terminus sits well outside central Shanghai, requiring a transfer to the metro system. For all its futuristic promise, the line functions as a high-speed airport shuttle, unmatched in technology but isolated from the city's daily pulse. As the doors close and the train lifts away, the gap between engineering marvel and everyday utility comes into focus. But here is what almost nobody is talking about. Spectacular speed does not always translate into broad usefulness. The maglev is a trophy of innovation, yes, but also a reminder that technology needs networks, convenience, and affordable fares to become part of daily life. In the early days, the Shanghai maglev wasn't just sold as a train. It was marketed as a leap into tomorrow. Promotional films and glossy brochures promised an experience that would make passengers question gravity itself. The train, they said, didn't ride on rails. It floated, held aloft by invisible forces, gliding so smoothly that even a full cup of tea would barely ripple at full speed. For travelers used to the rattle and sway of conventional trains, the silence was uncanny. There was no clatter, no jolt. 
only the faint hum of the electromagnetic field and the city melting away outside the window. One early writer compared it to flying in a plane just above ground level, a sensation of effortless motion that seemed to defy the laws of physics. The dream was intoxicating. Imagine a world where friction was conquered, where cities could be linked not by hours, but by minutes, and where the daily commute felt more like a first-class flight than a slog through traffic. Engineers and officials described the maglev as a symbol of national ambition, a statement that China could not only match the West's greatest inventions, but redefine the very future of travel. The message was clear. This wasn't just another train. It was a promise that the future had arrived, and it was floating silently above the ground. For all its futuristic promise, the Shanghai Maglev faces a checklist of obstacles that keep it from becoming the blueprint for global transit. The journey from Pudong Airport to Longyang Road may be fast, but it ends with a headache. Passengers must transfer to the metro or hail a taxi to reach central Shanghai. This extra leg chips away at the time savings and convenience, turning a technological marvel into a logistical puzzle for everyday travelers. Then there is the sticker shock. A single ride costs 50 RMB, nearly eight times the price of a metro ticket for a similar distance. That premium fare keeps the train half empty on most runs. In the early years, Official data showed occupancy rates hovering around 20%, and independent counts suggest that number has not budged much outside of peak travel times. For most commuters, the maglev is a special occasion, not a daily habit. The infrastructure itself is another hurdle. The elevated guideway, built at enormous expense, requires constant upkeep and precision alignment. Maintenance crews, Many still trained with German expertise work around the clock to keep the system running. Guideway repairs alone swallow a major chunk of the operating budget, with studies showing maintenance costs per kilometer far outpacing those of conventional high-speed rail. Each of these friction points, transfers, fares, upkeep, adds up turning the world's fastest train into a case study in how ambition can collide with reality. China's national rail map tells a different story than the maglev's dazzling headlines. Over the past two decades, planners have poured resources into a vast web of high-speed rail, linking hundreds of cities and moving millions every day. Policy documents consistently favored high-speed rail for its scalability and network effect. Each new line plugged into a growing system, multiplying its value. The maglev, for all its spectacle, remains a single branch, not a trunk. Analysts point to the numbers. More than 40,000 kilometers of high-speed rail built since 2008, compared to just 30.5 kilometers of maglev. The decision wasn't just about cost per kilometer, though that mattered. It was about reach, flexibility, and the ability to serve as a backbone for national mobility. The Shanghai Maglev stands as a monument to what is possible when ambition leads, but its isolation from the broader network raises a question that still echoes in policy circles. Should grand gestures shape the future of transport, or is the true revolution found in systems that connect, scale, and serve the many? In a test lab outside Qingdao, engineers in white coats watch as a new Maglev prototype hovers for the first time. This is not the old German Transrapid design. China's latest superconducting maglev aims for a cruising speed of 600 kilometers per hour. The prototype, unveiled in July 2025, is the fastest train ever built on Chinese soil. Its creators claim it can make the journey from Beijing to Shanghai in just two and a half hours, slicing travel time in half. In controlled experiments, even more ambitious targets are surfacing. Laboratory models have flirted with speeds up to 1,000 km per hour, a number that blurs the line between rail and aviation. On paper, these advances promise to rewrite the rules of distance, but there is a catch. The original Shanghai Hangzhou Maglev extension, the project meant to prove Maglev's network potential, remained stuck in endless feasibility reviews, 
With no construction date in sight, planners weigh the lessons of Shanghai's isolated line against the lure of next-generation speed. The question now is whether these breakthroughs will finally deliver the maglev revolution that Shanghai once promised, or whether the world's fastest floating train will remain a solitary trophy in a city of superlatives. Right now, Shanghai's maglev still runs alone, proof that speed alone does not guarantee a revolution. As new maglevs promise even faster travel, the real race is for ideas that can scale. Sometimes, the future arrives early and waits for the world to catch up.